Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration is working to restrict all heavy-duty commercial vehicles to a single top speed nationwide. Do these speed limiters threaten highway safety? And is that commonly what we call governors? I beg your pardon for the, what did you say the last? I said, do these speed limiters threaten highway safety? Um, yes, they definitely would uh, threaten highway safety. And there's many things we could do that would improve highway safety instead of this. How are these going to affect our supply chain? This is already um, damaged. It, it's going to slow down our supply chain. If you slow down trucks, it means it's going to take them longer to get somewhere. With them taking longer to get somewhere, it's going to create that we need more trucks. We all heard about, you know, the retention problem and all these things. So we're going to need more trucks, which will create more congestion on the highway, which will just slow the supply chain down even more. And isn't it true that most of these trucks are, are tested out and rated to go a, a, a great deal faster than these minimum speed limits that we're setting, and it also chokes the trucks down to where the diesel fuel is, is emitting out the exhaust. It's not fully, uh, fully ignited. I'm not a scientist, but I would say from my mechanical knowledge of what I've learned, that is true. And most trucks today are designed to spec. When you buy a truck like myself, when you purchase a truck, you purchase it to run at a set speed. You get a gear ratio and all these things to where you can run that truck, you know, probably in the zone or the region you're running. In your opinion, what are the federal laws or regulations that need to change to move freight faster and more reliably? Um, I think flexibility in hours of service would be a big help. I think better parking, of course, would be a big help. I think driver training, which is something we haven't talked about much in here at all, training people to get into the industry in the first place, more teeth into that training to where people come into this industry, they know what they're doing, they feel safer, they're safer, better drivers, and they stay. Increasing pay, paying overtime to truck drivers, um, will also um, help with that. Um, and one thing, another thing we talked about, this is a safety thing and will help the supply chain, more enforcement of the highways for speeders. And I'm not talking trucks, and, and I'm talking just more cops out there on the road watching what all the motoring public's doing. You can take a trip anywhere across this country and you hardly see cops at all anymore. People are speeding and cutting trucks off. You know, we've seen these ride shares, this different thing. So more enforcement over highways in general. All right, Mr. Um, Falkov, is that correct? Is that how you say your name? Yes, Congressman. All right, thank you. Um, how can these federal electric vehicle charging grant programs better support and encourage the private sector investment? Or can they? So Yes. Yeah, so, no, I, I appreciate the question. Um, the challenge with electric vehicle charging, as, as we see it, is marrying two different industries. You have a regulated electric utility industry um, that, by definition, is kind of operating in a guaranteed rate of return environment. And then you have the, the, the refueling industry, which is an extraordinarily competitive industry, right? It's not uncommon to see multiple gas stations at the same corner selling the same fungible commodity for the same price, right? So getting those two industries to work together is something that, that, that we think is extraordinarily important if that new vehicle uh, uh, fueling technology is to take off. The challenge that we found with these EV charging grant programs is that they are being treated like they are any other infrastructure program, right? You, you know, right. You, you get money to DOT, DOT gives the money to a state DOT, and then they, they, they spend the money in accordance with whatever parameters are established for them. We think that those parameters should prompt states, which tend to have more jurisdiction over the electric utility industry, to update the regulatory regime governing that sector so that it better comports with the EV charging market that is going to need to take off if that, that, um, uh, to, to kind of initiate private capital to just systemically flow to this industry so that if new chargers that are faster are invented in five years, we have an incentive to buy it without having to rely on... They're not, they're not there yet. I mean, let's be honest with these electric vehicles. You're going to take six, eight hours to charge. And to, I st keep, keep saying what we need to be, it needs to be like propane tank industry. You just pull in and pull your battery out get another battery that's fully charged and put it in because you're going to be waiting on the side of the road for eight hours. And um, 
my, my time is up. I could rant on that all day. But thank you all so much for being here.